<laughs> hey everyone, how's it going? Jonathan here with Chiu Besselink, the founder of The Learning Lab and co-creator of Freedom Lab. Thank you so much for being here with me, brother. Hey, man. It's oh, good meeting you. Definitely, yeah. So um, it was great to be able to connect with a good friend, Aramis, who is an education innovator over in Lithuania, and he connected me with these guys. And uh, the moment that I stepped into The Learning Lab and The Freedom Lab, I, my mind was instantly blown. Uh, the work that you guys are doing here is phenomenal. Uh, basically redesigning the education system from the ground up. And uh, you guys are integrated into the education system. You're integrated into uh, creating the, the Dutch school for teachers where you're helping uh, teachers become more entrepreneurial, uh, giving them design thinking training so that they're able to start to uh, see their their classrooms as a place for innovation rather than to teach the old model. They're, they're teaching the, the new uh, framework for, for learning. And uh, what you're doing here has completely shifted the education system in the Netherlands and I'm sure beyond. Uh, thank you for doing that, <laughs> first of all. <laughs> it's epic and, uh, and, and I guess uh, with the teacher school, uh, with, with the new school you're building across the street at the zoo, uh, what, is, what is your main initiative? What is your drive uh, in, in this transformation of the education system? What, what, what drives you to do this? Ooh. So, you know that like the, um, the longer I'm in this work, um, the more drives I discover, it's like, oh yeah, that's why I'm doing this. And the next one, it's like, oh yeah, man, but this one I'm doing this also for. So uh, one of the most important things, the most original things that that started this whole thing for me was was kind of the aliveness um, that I was missing in my own uh, education. Right. Um, and I had because I'm you know I'm I, I'm just I'm very exploratory. So I you know I tend to have a lot of experiences, jump into the deep and figure out you know what life is about. And I thought you know. Why don't I have those in the school, in my university? Why am I not thrilled to go every time um, and and doing something that actually means something to me and the people around me? Um, and I know, I mean, it's not something that you know. There's obviously a lot of really amazing people walking around in, in universities doing great stuff. But in general, what we are producing as a system are outcomes that we all don't want. Right. Um, so that was that was a big big drive for me. It's like okay, how does this aliveness? What does it mean to be a human being and being alive? And how can I? And what is that about? Nice. You know, that is about my. That is not. It is about my life. It's about this world in which I live and the connection that we manage to to forge between the two. So in your experience in seeing the old system, you were able to then redesign this new system for education and you started to create this new space that is the Freedom Lab. How did the Freedom Lab come to life? Right, so the Freedom Lab uh, 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 comes out of uh, Ayan Posma and, uh, and Jurgen van Sloot. They were two, they started uh, years and years ago in a small space as a think tank for, for future studies for an investment company. And um, at some point, uh, people involved in the, in the think tech, like, uh, like myself, who were thinking what is now possible if we would think, I mean, we are of the future studies, right? So if we imagine our own future, um, uh, how would that look like in terms of how we work, how we want to live, how we want to contribute to the world around us? And out of that summer that we spent on this question, this thing came, um, which was built by two years ago. To uh, one and a half year ago, I think, and um, it, it basically is a crazy hub of of like-minded people from completely different parts of you know the uh, intellectual and creative spectrum, uh, companies, philosophers, uh, technology, uh, everything you know basically thrown into a box without us exactly knowing what this is you know, um, but figuring it out really as a lab really with the question, okay, so um, disruptive technologies, moving society, um, you know, what is this world about and, what, and, how, and how do we want to create it? Um, everybody has his own little company or place or thing here, um, but together uh, we really do form a community, right, of, of 
people that handle um, uh, big questions, societal challenges. Um, and mainly what we do is learn from each other. We learn from each other and from the challenges that we engage with. And that's so exciting because this, I think this is the new university. You know, this is the new school. This is the school of the future, right? It is not very institutionalized. It is just a big space with very many different influences and people uh, that do share some sort of purpose. But the way that they organize is completely, well, self-organized, basically. Okay, so what exactly do we have in this space? Like, I mean, I see 3D printers, there's whiteboards everywhere on every wall. Uh, I mean, there must be 20 rooms. How many rooms is in this place? I don't know, like a lot. This is, I think, 4,000 square meters of, of creative space. And so, but space is just space. I mean, the space is made by, uh, I mean, you know, there was no fab lab in this when we started it, but, you know, somebody thought it was necessary to have one. Yeah. So we got one and we use it for prototyping in our sessions and, 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 and you know, innovation uh, processes or just to build stuff ourselves which we like you know that's all good um, so that emerges out of a need from the community yeah uh, so we fill it up it's an empty space filled up by us nice. um, everything everything is here to make it as you know enabling as possible when you say the big whiteboards everywhere you can write on every wall almost here um, there's there's all all possible technologies that you can think of somewhere <laughs> connecting everything here um, and uh, yeah so it's inspiring um, big spaces small spaces for all sorts of things yeah so okay so you got the space right. and you've got the, the new model for the new school what is the curriculum what is the pedagogy what is what is the next level of education uh, not only for for this space but beyond the space in new classrooms and and what does the future of education look like to you all right so one of the projects um, uh, that we worked on is the uh, the Dutch school and it is basically a reimagining the teacher training um, programs. Um, so this started the root of education. Nice. It's it goes further than just making a school for teachers because you know what if you really attract really amazing people and then have an amazing curriculum that educates amazing uh, teachers that then enter into a school where they die. Right. Um, because they are not able to or allowed to give their gift. Hmm. Uh, which is sadly enough uh, the case in, in many schools. And that's, that's not because people don't want that, because schools don't want that. It's not because of that. It's, everybody wants that. Right. Yeah. But for some reason, we don't know how to allow that to happen within the system, the rules and the frames and the, you know, that we created for ourselves. Yeah. Um, so we had to th re rethink this whole chain uh, that we're in, this and whole system. Now, right? at one point, you, you started talking about how you were able to hack the system. Right. And, and how were you able to do that? Um, well, the first thing is have a, a, a daring, transformative purpose, you know, that is, that is to the core of what it is all about. You know, not the little improvement to the system. That's not going to, you know, go anywhere. You know, if we really want to mobilize massive support from, from the people who matter, you have to have a massive and transformative uh, purpose. And what would so you say is your, was, what so is your transformative purpose if, if you were to break it down into one statement? So teachers are the coolest people in the world and they should be the most um, uh, uh, enabling people in the world. So we should, every day, everything has to, has to uh, uh, move out of the way for them to be able to do their thing. Yeah. That's number one. So the whole system has to gear around making that possible. Yeah. yeah, that's the purpose in this whole thing. And, um, and secondary questions are, what do they need to do? How does the curriculum look like? I mean, that's all sort of technical stuff. Yep. I mean, forgive me for saying, it's not very difficult to make a very exciting curriculum. Right. It's very difficult to have people actually, you know, make useful learning experiences with it in a classroom that is not, you know, made for it right now. Right. So we're not educating teachers for schools that we have right now, getting teachers for schools that don't exist yet mm -hmm. because they're going to create them. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> He's good. Love your style. Hmm. Okay, so 
Now you're starting to explore new opportunities. And uh, one thing that I heard you talk about earlier is you were explaining how you were able to start the teacher school and actually plant it next to the original teacher school. Yeah, so uh, uh, Hans van der Wind and, and Matt Nieuwen, founders, um, uh, enabled a group of, of designers to, to architect this new school, but also the system that would allow for it to uh, hack the, the, the current system. So one of the things we managed to do was to get uh, uh, funding uh, from the ministry for a program that is not accredited according to, you know, that's not accredited basically. Right. Yeah. Uh, with the aim of generating a new um, uh, a title. Hmm. Yeah. Um, so which will be accredited according to its own standards. Great. Thereby creating a new standard for what it means to be a teacher. Right. Yeah. Bypassing existing frames and saying, wait a minute, guys, this is the new dot on the horizon that we need to go to. Right. Um, and then the rest can move with it. So right now, you know, because this happened, basically, all the other um, um, schools and universities uh, teacher, doing teacher training are starting to realign their curriculum. Hmm. Yeah, so that's already an impact that is, that is happening right now, just because we are uh, relocating the coordinates of what it is about, what right. education and teaching is about. Right. Now, you were explaining a little bit about that, that framework. It's integrating uh, system thinking, design thinking. Right, so uh, the curriculum. What else? Yeah. Um, so the curriculum is, is um, one thing is about the first and most important thing is uh, the principle that you teach what you are. Mm. You teach what you are. You do not teach a method or a subject, but what you, who you are. That means that the person, that's one in the curriculum, the person is, and, and his or her personal development is number one. Hmm. Uh, that's one. Then the whole curriculum is based on three pillars. Designing, yeah? um, uh, so teaching as a design profession. Second, researching, learning as a researching activity. Uh, yourself, uh, your subject matter, your, your students. And... Uh, uh, three, it's entrepreneuring. So one, you have to be able to design your own learning environment. You have to design the learning experience for the, uh, the students you're teaching. You have to design your own school. You have to be able to do that. You have to, don't have to do it alone. We have to be able to do that. Second, you have to then also be able to account for what you've been doing. You have to research it and prove it systematically. Yeah. Not just do something nice because you know you like it. You have to be able to account for it also to the people that are part of the the existing system. Yeah. And three, um, you have to also be able to realize it, not just design it, not just think about it, not just make a nice plan. Right. It is very different from having a great plan uh, uh, to implement it with the people around you, the parents, the you know, the companies in the neighborhood of your whatever, whoever, uh, your kids, the school boards. Uh, you know, it's it, building that community, entrepreneuring in that, becoming entrepreneurial independently, maybe of your school, yeah. thereby gaining your freedom as a as a teacher and. Um, uh, you know, don't letting yourself be blocked by whatever uh, organization you're in. Uh, that's a third uh, a pillar. Nice. Yeah, and all the activities uh, around that are uh, 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 yeah, uh, just based on these three. So you've been able to uh, take this model of creating new education programs and take it outside of this space, take it outside of the teacher training and actually take it into the zoo across the street from this building. Um, yeah, what is your yeah, vision yeah, for that? Yeah. So, the zoo, so the zoo thing, this is another project from the Learning Lab. Um, and the campus, we think actually, you know, one will hear, why don't we just have a, a campus school? Can we not ourselves build a, a school for kids? Um, that models the society we would like to, to live in. We live across the zoo, the zoo is right there. So it sort of makes sense to build your school out of the building blocks that are locally here. Um, one of the building blocks is us. This energy here, the, the different disciplines and people, um, that's a nice thing to have in a school, I think. Um, across the, 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 the street, there's a zoo reconnecting with nature, reconnecting um, uh, as kids and taking part in a, in a larger ecosystem, I think is very useful. Yeah? So uh, the science that is part of that, um, uh, you know, the, the caring that's part of it. So the, uh, I don't know where that is going yet. We just started with this idea. Yeah. 
Um, and we, we could start because for some reason um, the, the local government in Amsterdam is starting to become open to new, for, new schools, new forms of education. Yeah. So this is a prototype, this is a test. We're going to see if that create new, we can't just create a new school yeah, normally. That's sort of difficult. But there's a possibility right now yeah. in an experimental space. So this is one of those things we're going to try to make. The, we don't know exactly what it's going to be. Yeah? Yeah. I don't know. I have a vision. I have a feeling. I have a feeling that, that education should be for a resilient society and a resilient life. I mean, I should be able to, you know, as a child, uh, be resilient in my environment. Right. But I don't know what the form is that that will take. I, I don't really care that much either. Yeah. Um, but it's much more interesting right now for us is to figure out how we, what kind of form we can create with the building blocks we have right here. Yeah. Yeah, it seems like it's such a powerful time to be able to come into a system like Amsterdam, a, a community like Amsterdam, who's already very uh, forward-thinking and progressive, uh, but to be able to come in with this purpose-driven mission to have a, a, a positive impact. Um, but at the same time, it seems like you've got to be able to have the uh, the the mind and almost be crazy enough to do it. Do you do you think that this type of of work? I mean, do you have to be do you have to be crazy crazy like to, to do this work uh -huh. like what does it take you know yes of course you know yeah no yeah absolutely you have to be 100 percent crazy you, know? <laughs> you have to be 100 percent. wait i mean of course you cannot survive on only craziness right so a crazy person should organize also his you know, like boring decent people around him but without it it's not going to happen you know you have to be able to take a lot of risk uh, jump into complete unknowns and um, make that your your hobby that you know make that your home wow. live there yeah that's hard, yeah. So because half of the projects fail, um, you know, everything changes all the time, and you might end up without anything. Yeah. Um, if you can handle that, yeah. that's cool. And if you have a drive, I think you know, try to look in yourself. Where is that thing that 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 brings the awesomeness out? You know, what makes? I mean, okay, setting audacious goals is not because you want to reach them. It's because you know you're gonna become a different person trying to get there. You know, it's what you have to learn in order to, to, to get there. That is the that is where the value is. That's what gets you out of bed. Yeah. You know. So that is um, the for me that is the craziness. You know. If, yeah. And sometimes the spin-off is completely mad. You know, like in this program we did here um, in uh, in Amsterdam with students at the university. Um, um, my main question was. Uh, uh, can we can we make a program that is only about uh, making stuff that really means something to the people that are in the program? Hmm. Yeah. So that is a very broad description. Yeah. Right. Um, so really make a meaningful impact for me and the and the environment around me. That's your assignment as a student. We got time, and in the middle, that's what you're going to do. I don't know how that looks like. Right. Yeah. Um, but out of that, we we started this on a on a graveyard. Hmm. Right. You can see that there's a movie online. You can see it. And um, nobody knew this was your, the, first, the first class was in a graveyard. Hmm. Um, and that was part of an experience. It's a bit of a theater, but it's, but it's an experience that, that says, hey, wait a minute, we're all gonna be there. Uh, and, and until we're there, and I don't know when that is, tomorrow, next year, 100 years, but I got time. That's the only stuff I have. And what am, gonna, am I gonna do with it? That is the only question here. And what is meaningful then? How do we spend our time between now and the end of the course in a meaningful way, in the most meaningful way? Yeah. Um, that's crazy, yeah? So uh, it was raining, it was middle of the night, it was in, in, in February, it was cold. Crazy, who's gonna be on, on a freaking graveyard in the middle of the night for a class? Um, uh, but, it, but it brings something home. Yeah. Um, uh, a purpose, a, ma uh, a connection with you know what I'm doing here creates a community, and out of that came a purpose for the people that were participating in this lab. Yeah, it's powerful. Yeah, it takes the tenacity to want to do it. It takes like the mindset to to see the vision and and to know that you only have one chance to do it. And you know maybe you fail and you know you run out of ideas that don't work and eventually you find something that does um, and and you definitely have I mean just to see this space to see the the future of education at its at its finest um, physically to be able to have a space like this to find the people to invest in this idea is huge and so
so I just commend you on 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 getting this far and 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 creating this space and creating the environment for people to be innovative and express their creativity but also be able to share learning with the youth and to start to create these new systems now uh, I guess my next question is uh, with this new kind of environment of innovation and kind of this evolution of, of consciousness where we're starting to realize that the old structured system that's designed to get students through as efficiently as possible, it's starting to wake up and people are starting to see that there's there's other options, there's better ways of doing things and, and starting to really almost honor the spirit that's within each person, which within each individual, as you said, like it starts with what is, you know, what is their story as the individual? Um, what do you think is the the importance and the influence of integrating this new level of, of consciousness and awareness and mindfulness into education and into business? Yeah, thanks for that question because it's it's really the core, right? I mean, I don't believe there is any other way. Um, the one cannot go without the other. I believe if you want to take a step out there, you have to take a step in here. They go together. You cannot separate them. I have to become another person in order to create something in the world. And I have to... Um, and I become another person by creating something into the world. So these two go together. And um, uh, uh, if we are making stuff that we don't know what it is yet, because you know we're, we're for the first time in this situation we are inventing the world in which we want to live um, then that's a learning process it's not a manufacturing process mm. and this is a personal learning process as much as it is a skills process right um, and as a business i mean okay so apart from the fact that we are living in an exhaustive economy that will just deplete everything we have right you know, whether it's our resources or our social relationships or you know, anything, basically. Built on debt, basically. Built on debt, basically. It, it's not, it's not going to go anywhere. Right. There's only one direction where this can go. Yeah. Um, all our basic needs are becoming more and more expensive um, uh, to fulfill and less and less in quality mm. with this system. Right. It's not going to happen. This planet cannot host it and our social relationships uh, are not built for it. Mm. So if we want to go anywhere, <laughs> yeah, we have to redesign all that thing from the, from 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 the start. What are our real basic needs? Apart, huh? so, and that means something about the quality of food, the quality of relationships, the quality of you know uh, anything. Yeah. So yeah. that for that we need a different identity. We need to identify ourselves as different beings. Yeah. Yeah, I, uh, we have to learn that. So um, uh, you say mindfulness, uh, a new consciousness. And uh, yeah, um, I think that if you start something right now, a business, a product, a, a school, uh, I don't care. Be really mindful for what it is coming out of. From where does it come? Right. Like, what is the place from which this place, this thing is born? What is the DNA, the seed from which this is coming? Does it carry the consciousness that you want to see in the world, or doesn't it? Mm. Because it will determine where it's going to go. Wow. Yeah. So that is my my main my concern. That's why I also I think education is so important. To really, I know. I hope I I hope to contribute to people that have beautiful places from th which things can can grow. Right. Yeah. Right on. I guess. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. So I want to just uh, end, end this off by bringing it to like a, a really practical, uh, powerful, influential uh, space where like I just want to ask you what, what, what is it like to be you? <laughs> <laughs> like, like what is it, what is your, what is your, what, what are, what are you eating for breakfast? Oh my God. What are you, uh, what do you research? Uh, who are the people you follow? Yeah. And, and what are the, what are the skills that you think, uh, you know, people need for the 21st century? That was four different questions. That's a lot of questions. 
questions. But but think more practical on a practical note. What what do you these future leaders who are watching that, uh, you know, what message do you have for them? Don't give up. Don't give up. It's a mess, man. It's uh, you know, it's hard. I find to be me. It is um, great great friends who are on a similar path, and and that is so necessary. Yeah. You know, it's so necessary to have people that understand what you're doing. That's key. Um, and really take time for them is very difficult as an entrepreneur. But like, block out entire weeks that you're with them. Hmm. Yeah? So, which is like weeks of quality time. Right. Campfires, you know, whatever. Do something, but take your time for each other. Very important. Um, because the rest of the, the time you're gonna be like all over the place. Just going, yeah. 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 How do you stay organized? Don't. <laughs> no, this is a, yeah. No, I'm terrible. It's horrible. It's horrible. I'm so unorganized in a way. I mean, I don't know. I'm organized in. I'm in K organized in my own way. Um, a lot of my life is serendipitous. Yeah. I had to organize. I had to do that like this. It's too complex. I cannot manage it. Right. I cannot organize it. I can literally not organize my life. So a lot of it is serendipitous. And a space like this, a place like this, helps enormously because I walk into everything that I need to be walking into right. at sort of the right moment. Cool. <laughs> right. Yeah. So if I make appointments for everything I'm doing, right. it's out of you know, it's not working. Wow is uh, who are the people that you're researching that you're following on on twitter facebook and and who who, who are your leaders right right my leaders are are usually already dead um like one of the people that really inspires me tremendously is is john dewey he's 100 years old Love uh, john dewey. Years, yeah yeah yep. um and basically, he says the same stuff that we're doing, right? Yep. And he spent his life, you know, doing this stuff. Doing the same thing. Where, yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, he, he, he is a philosopher of the future, you know? Yeah. Literally, you know, yeah. he says, we cannot educate people for a future we don't know even how it looks like. For yeah. the next 20 years, who knows how the world looks like in 20 years? So, I mean, so these are my thought leaders. Right. Um, yeah. I guess, and I feel most comfortable with them. I feel increasingly uncomfortable with, um, with um, yeah, kind of all the, the, the inno innovators that we have. Hmm. We've got so many innovators. I mean, I mean, I'm guilty as, as hell, yeah? But um, there's something in the pace of our life that I feel is unsustainable. The hmm. pace of, of the next cool thing or the next, like, you know, that is not sustainable i don't believe it we don't have the we need more time we need slow we need to slow down to really do the stuff that isn't that is that's right in the core wow um i you know all the te disruptive technologies and everything i mean we know i mean and of course i follow all of them but but that's not because i think that's where the new thing is right. it's important because it's the context in which we work but it's the, the really the real stuff that I try to do is slow down yeah. and it's hard because I cannot find, it's very difficult to find that that slow time yeah um, yeah but that's the important one yeah faster we move the slower we go yeah so slow down in order to accelerate yeah yeah it's like why am I doing this what is really going on here what is really going on here yeah yeah Cool, the sharing economy, fantastic. What's really going on here? Right. Uh, you know, cool, sustainable, blah de blah agriculture. What's really going on here? Yeah. You know, cool, 3D. What's really? What's what's? Okay, that's my. Yeah. Cool. So, for anyone out there that wants to get in touch with you or wants to follow your work, how can they keep in touch? The Learning Lab. Dot NL. This work. Cool. Yeah. Great. You can find me. Right on. Well. From the city of Amsterdam here in the Netherlands, this is Jonathan reporting to you live, and uh, thank you so much for joining me here today. Thanks, man. That's great. From the Freedom Lab and the Learning Lab, aloha.